Planning Commission for the uh, our regular meeting on Monday, April 9, 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sue, roll call, please. Commissioner Kenwalder? Here. Commissioner Chambers? Here. Commissioner Ellis? Here. Commissioner Plank is absent tonight. Commissioner Schraven? Here. And Chair Barker? Here. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion to excuse uh, Colin, please? I'll make a motion to excuse Colin. I'll second. And all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Colin is excused. Uh, I do need a motion for the approval of the agenda. A motion to approve it. I'll and, second. And discussion? All in favor uh, of the uh, agenda as it stands, uh, please say yes. 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 Thank you. And I need a uh, motion for the approval of the minutes of the uh, previous meeting from March 12, 2018, our regular meeting. A motion to approve it. I'll second. And discussion, please. Hearing no discussion, all in favor of accepting the uh, minutes as written, please say aye. Aye. And all at the same time. The minutes are accepted. Thank you. Um, before we get started on the uh, rest of the agenda, is there any public comments and communications uh, concerning items not on the agenda? With that, we will go right on then. Thank you. Uh, number five is old business. Uh, we have been working, as everybody knows, on redoing our zoning ordinances chapter by chapter by chapter. Uh, and we had um, uh, scheduled originally chapter 19 and chapter 20, which is the um, uh, two chapters that uh, uh, we have been working on, parking and signs. And we're going to de uh, defer both of those until uh, uh, our main meeting so that uh, we can concentrate on our uh, uh, land use. So, plans. So, new business, public hearing. Eric Barkas, uh, special land use at 215 West Main Street. Uh, Eric, or a representative here? Yes. Eric? Yes. Would you please come to our podium here and just in a few words, just tell us what you want to do. <laughs> in your own words. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Eric Barkas, uh, thank you for seeing me. My wife and I own the 215 West Main Street Ability Weaver store. Above the store has been two apartments for many years. They have been vacant now for at least 10 years. They were in a uh, state of disrepair. I'd like to move ahead to repair them, very similar to what they were, and uh, either uh, rent them to others or possibly my wife and I use one of the units for our own living. But. Uh, the, the first plan would be to have two rentals for other people. I do want to say that it's been a kind of a difficult process learning about the rehabilitation codes. There, uh, and maybe others that have gone through this know more about it than I do, but the, to, to renovate, especially historic buildings, you need to use a rehabilitation code, which a lot of architects aren't familiar with but the building inspector is very strict on, so I've been delayed many months, and it's been fairly expensive to, to move this along. Uh, I wish there was a simpler process, but um, I, I think I'm getting close. Thank you, Eric, uh, and, and especially for you know, giving us that piece of advice as well. Um, because our, our city manager is here, and, and our clerk and our advisor here, it, it, it helps when they're working on uh, redoing zoning ordinances and things of that nature. And that's really how those kinds of things get, get addressed eventually. Right. Um, and part of it obviously does have to do with the historic nature of it. I, I know that moves it into a different realm. Right. And different codes and all of those kinds of things. So we, we appreciate that, uh, you know, that bit of advice that is from the so sure, sure, sure. And then just to, to add on, and this is a state rule so I'm, I'm you know everyone has to play by that rehabilitation code but i've had many discussions about the need for an elevator and fire suppression and those costs make a big difference on you know the viability of doing this so 
Uh, again, I think I'm, I'm there. This tonight will be a good step to actually breaking drywall and getting going. So thank you. Good. Thank you, Eric. And we may we may ask you some questions here. So when that time comes, we'll, we'll call you back up, I guess. Thank you. Um, Andy, you want to kind of walk us through it? Sure. Um, so this, it's a little, um, it can be a little bit awkward in this case because we have a um, desirable activity on the second floor of a downtown building. It was, these buildings were designed for this kind of activities. Um, however, in the zoning ordinance, uh, residential uses in the same building as a, as a commercial activity is, is a special land use. And so uh, that's why we are, we're having a public hearing tonight. And that's why it has to go through this specific process. Um, if it was permitted by right, it would move that along a bit faster from a zoning perspective. But uh, the zoning ordinance being, being what it is, we have to follow it. And so um, we have to apply the same standards to this special use as we do to other special uses. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll just walk through the special land use re re review standards here one at a time. Okay, thank you. And then the commission can just kind of discuss briefly each one and determine if it satisfies or not. Um, and then uh, we can talk about a motion and possible conditions if you're inclined to approve it after that. So the first standard talks about uh, the proposed special land use shall be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained. So it has to be harmonious and appropriate in appearance with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity and that such use will not change the essential character of the area in which it's proposed. Uh, I had a few remarks on this in my report, basically that this, that the building itself, they're not changing the outside of it very much. Um, it achieves that desired aesthetic. It's consistent with the master plan. Uh, the master plan encourages and it sort of desires mixed uses, especially downtown and residential over retail and things like that. Um, and any time that we're, that we're filling vacant floor or vacant space in our downtown with, 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 a, with a viable use, I think, is a good thing. So in my opinion, this, this, this standard was satisfied. And uh, I don't know, Mr. Chairman, if you want to discuss each of these as we go through. Uh, let's do that. And we'll, we'll take a uh, voice vote at least uh, okay. on each one. So um, special land use review standards and everybody as Andy says has to go through these uh, standards so this is uh, the first one um, is there any questions on, on this one any, anybody have any any problems with it at all okay mr. chair I have um, a question. yes Andy just a quick question obviously this is special land use um, I guess my question is is if the whole downtown is a planned unit development district will we have to do this if we just made the whole downtown chip a PUD would this be an issue so we did to um, make a simpler step. I'm just asking. Yeah, probably not. There's a lot. There's a lot of changes. There's a lot of different things we can do in zoning to to, to skip this stuff. And I think once the planning commission gets to the point where we're looking at the C2 and some of the downtown districts, as we go through the, the zoning ordinance, I think one of the things that we'll need to look at is this use specifically. Um, in my opinion, I don't know how much sense it makes to have to have something that that, that we all want to be a special land use. So we put all these all this extra process in front of it. Um, if it were per, if it were just simply permitted by right, it's possible that you wouldn't have to come here at all, depending on what you're doing. So there's a few different ways that we could deal with it. Making you know zoning downtown or part of it as PUD might also accomplish the same thing. But yeah, there's yeah. definitely a bunch of ways that we could look at it. City manager, that's that's where we're heading to with the zoning ordinances. I mean, that we're we're getting close to going to the individual districts, and okay. we'll take those. Probably three at a time, or okay. the city, the downtown one will probably just be one because it is rather complex to begin right. with. So we'll probably do that as one. Um, but that's exactly why we're trying to work our way sure. through the ordinances. So yeah, sure. good question. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, item number two: the proposed special land use shall be generally consistent with the city of Lowell master plan. Um, we talked about a little bit about that in, in number one, but the city of Lowell master plan really. Uh, articulates and emphasizes a desire to strengthen the core. It talks a lot about downtown development, mixed use, walkable, compact, uh, sort of urban form downtown where you have buildings built up the street, you've got stores. Um, on the main floor, you've got offices or residential uses on the second and third floors. 
Um, it's, it's consistent with all of those kinds of things. It fits right into what the master plan uh, calls for. So in our view, this one is also satisfied. Thanks, Andy. Uh, commissioners, any, uh, any thoughts on two? Any, any discussion? All in favor of saying okay to two? Okay to two. Yeah. Uh, number three, the proposed special land use shall be served adequately by essential public facilities and services such as highway, streets, police, and fire protection, drainage structures, refuse, disposal, water, and sewage facilities. Um, given its location, it's obviously accessible to all of those things. Um, if it's approved after that, we have a, a uh, kind of a process that the city goes through internally where we make sure the DPW gets it. Um, you know, the uh, Board of Power and Light sees a copy, the fire department sees it. So all those agencies kind of sign off on these things. I don't anticipate there being any problems because it's an established building in an area that's served adequately by all of those things already. Um, so with conditions, I think that, I, mean, I, I think it's met anyways, but I think to kind of doubly check on that uh, after, uh, after approval, if it's approved, um, it would be met. Thank you, Andy. Commissioners, any, uh, any discussion on uh, standard three? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, number four, the proposed special land use shall not create excessive additional requirements at public cost for public facilities and services. Um, since we're only talking about two residential units, it's a you know, very minimal impact to you know, parking, traffic, all that stuff. I mean, the activity and the and, and, and the density is downtown where we want it. So um, I don't feel like it would create any additional uh, requirements or anything at, at a public cost. So I think number four is also satisfied. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, anything on uh, four? Stands up. All in favor of accepting standard four, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Number five, the proposed special land use shall not involve uses, activities, processes, materials, and equipment or conditions of operation that would be detrimental to any person's property or the general welfare, welfare by reason of excessive of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glare, or odors. Again, two residential units aren't going to cause all of those things. And, um, so I believe that's, that, that standard is also satisfied. And uh, there is a, um, a point on there on the uh, storage of refuge, and uh, we may want to put that in the uh, as a condition. Other than that, uh, anything on number five, commissioners? Mm -hmm. Eric, that might be a question for you. Are you going to be able to combine trash with your downstairs? Any, any, is there just another trash barrel? Is that what we're looking at? We uh, share the Backwater Cafe's uh, dumpster, mm -hmm. and that's hopefully we can continue that, but that's what we currently do for the business is just chip into that every year. Okay. Okay, so if that answers the question. Commissioners, is that satisfactory with everybody? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, then we don't even need to do a condition on that one. Anything else on five? All in favor of accepting standard five, please say aye. Thank you. Um, standard six is one that we added recently. It's just a general standard that uh, states that the proposed special land use shall comply with applicable federal, state, and local requirements. Copies of all applicable permits shall be, shall be submitted to the city. Um, I think it's a process of, of doing that right now. Obviously, building permits and some of that stuff comes subsequent to zoning approval. Uh, but it's addressed as a condition of approval, and I don't have any reason to think that it would not be met. Commissioners, anything on uh, condition number six? Nope. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And all the same sign. Okay. Okay, section 1707R. Yeah, so within the special land use chapter, it also has standards for, for specific uses. So subsection R is uh, design standards for residential dwellings in the same building as commercial uses. And there, there are only two standards here. Uh, one of them uh, requires that commercial uses shall not be located on the same story of, of the building as the, as the dwelling. And so some of these are on an upper floor. That one is going to be satisfied. And the second one just says the dwelling units shall comply with the requirements of the R3 district for multiple family dwellings. Um, 
if you look at that, there's not a lot of standards in R3 for multiple family, but it talks about the minimum floor area size, which is 500 square feet, plus an extra 150 square feet per bedroom. Um, the total area for each unit wasn't shown on the on the floor plan that we uh, got, but just doing some quick kind of back the napkin math, it's pretty clear that there's going to be more than enough room to satisfy that that standard too. So uh, both one and two in that section 1707 R are also satisfied in my view. Commissioners, anything on uh, the uh, section 1707 R on either one or two that you see? The only thing I see is I think it would be probably a good idea at some point to have the uh, square footage as a condition for, um, for each each apartment, correct? Andy? Yeah, each, just, yeah, just so it's clear. But at, yeah. at, at some point, we should get um, on the uh, as part of the condition the square foot of each. Uh, and and Andy's right. If you do the rough math, there's more than enough room there. I'm not worried about it, but it, you know, we round out that. Don't want to try and carry five apartments there. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, so with that, we did recommend approval um, of the permit. There's six conditions that I suggested here on the um, page three of my report. Um, you can probably get rid of number six, it sounds like, which is talking about refuse. Um, number five, uh, request that the applicant indicate the total area. Do you know just off the top of your head with the floor area of each of the of each unit is? It's at least 1,100 square feet. Each one? Each one. Okay. Um, uh, the other conditions, uh, number one, two, really the first four conditions we've put on pretty much everything. So um, you have to get a building <coughs> permit, you have to pay all the app application fees, obtain all other state, federal, and local permits and approvals. And if there's any other uh, requirements of the fire department or other emergency personnel, they'd have to satisfy those uh, requirements as well. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion for application for site plan review and special land use? Uh, I'll have a motion to accept that. Okay. I'll second. And discussion? Let's do a voice vote. Uh, Sue, please. Commissioner Canwilder? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Commissioner Plank is absent. Commissioner Schrauben? Yes. And Chair Barker? Yes. Uh, congratulations, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. And we'll take your, uh, your advice under consideration. I know Andy's already got a couple of notes on it, so I think we're, we'll, we'll move along in that, in that regard. That's, that's really nice. Good luck. Okay. Uh, the next uh, public hearing is for the Benton Baker Auto Group Special Land Use and Site Plan, 930 West Main. Uh, is there a representative of Benton Baker? And again, my request is to just simply tell us what you guys want to do. Okay. Yes, hello, I'm Mike Bauman from Pioneer Construction here uh, for Benton Baker. Pete Ricards from Benton Baker is also here to answer your question. question. So um, uh, basically since Benton Baker purchased the dealership um, about a year ago, their intent has always been to revitalize the whole property. Um, the proposed plan is to demolish the three existing old buildings on the site and um, build a new building that would include um, New car for Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Um, a pre-owned uh, sales facility and a service facility. Um, and revamping the whole site improvements, um, which include improving the access, the drives are going to be greatly improved, um, landscaping and lighting. Anything, anything additional at all? And, and it was Pete Baker? No, Rickards. Pete. Pete Rickards? Pete Rickards. Anything you want to say offhand? Uh, well, I'm 
of a Lowell uh, resident myself, and look forward to improving the uh, business uh, climate here. Okay, so thank you. Raise the level of uh, performance. Super. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Andy, again, you want to lead us through the discussion? Sure, yes. I did receive an email when you, if you'd like me to read that into record. Sure. Okay. Um, I wanted to be at this meeting tonight to personally relay my concerns with the proposed expansion at the Chrysler Jeep dealership located at 930 West Main Street. I purchased my home on South Center Street almost 10 years ago. I'm on the east side of the Chrysler Jeep dealership. In the past, there were only occasional annoyances from the PA system, car alarms, and individuals working on their race cars in the evening and robbing them up over and over. I overlooked these issues because they were not constant, but they were still very annoying. But over the past two years, a new issue has come to light. That is, employees purposely setting off car alarms over and over from anywhere between a few, a few seconds up to one and a half minutes. Yes, I actually timed it. To find vehicles in the lot. When cars are being moved, this can continue for several hours, and it can be every day or on a peaceful week several days out of the week. Yes, I understand that I purchased a home next to a business, but businesses have to realize that when they border residential areas, they need to be respectful in this consistent setting up of car alarms and use of an outdated PA system is unacceptable. This is invading my peace, especially during the summer when I'm outside more, but it also affects my business. I am a mental health therapist with a specialty in trauma. My office my offices are in my home. I have a separate entrance, waiting room, and office. In the past two years, I've had several clients startled so badly during sessions from the car alarms going off over and over that some have gone into full panic attacks. This is not acceptable. I have spoken with the general manager three times in the past two years, asking for this to change and made asking for this to change and made suggestions on how to change it and was assured it would be addressed and no longer happen. Once, when it went on consistently for several hours, I went over and spoke with a gentleman who was moving the cars, and he was quite rude, snapping at me that this was the only way to do it because it would take too long to find the vehicles any other way. On the spur of the moment, I suggested that they take a can of spray paint and make the rows and numbers and assign the cars to a specific row and number space. Then tag with this information could, could be placed on a key. I was told this would be too much work and that he had things to do and he walked away. If I can come up with a viable and not too time consuming alternative to keep peace and quiet in the neighborhood, then these are alternatives and this practice of setting off car alarms to find vehicles needs to end immediately. Additionally, they are using the outside PA system more and more. Listening to someone say on the speakers over and over, hello, 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 is anyone out there is not acceptable. Why can't some type of individual pager system be installed to keep peace in our neighborhood? My other concern is that we need to keep our streets clear and I hope that no parking is going to be allowed on South Center Street. It was dangerous when Rhonda Tire was able to do this and I was almost hit on several occasions. So all of this leading to my concerns about expansion at this lot located at 930 West Main Street. First, I am an avid gardener and most days in the summer I'm working in my yard and my Zen time is distributed over and over by the noise of this dealership. I can't even leave my windows open in the spring, summer, and fall unless I hear the PA system or the car alarms going off throughout the day. Second, it is affecting my clients. My third concern is that the value of my home is going to go down and it will be harder to sell because who wants to listen to car alarms and PA systems in the parking lot going off over and over several times daily. Finally, I hope some of my neighbors are at this meeting because several of us have had concerns about the noise issues. So I am not for an expansion at this dealership because it will cause these problems to increase. I am a lifelong resident, born and raised in Lowell. I love this town. It is typically a peaceful small town, but businesses need to be kept in check in regards to noise for it to remain that way. So if expansion occurs without these issues being resolved, I will have to honestly evaluate selling my home and moving elsewhere because it is just too much to ask to have my peace and quiet constantly disturbed. Respectfully submitted, Melissa Spino, 131 South Center Street.
Thanks. Mm -hmm. This was a little bit more complex review um, than the previous app application because this is basically a wholesale redevelopment of the site. So they're taking out all the buildings, everything, redo the sidewalk, um, completely more or less starting from scratch. So, so taking the VA system off? <laughs> I guess I, I guess I don't know for sure that wasn't uh, in, indicated on the application, but we can certainly talk about that. Um, so I guess to get started, we'll just walk through the site plan elements, and then we'll talk about the special land use uh, thing that. So, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if I should wait till after you go through the site plans, or I also have some public comments. Well, let's, let's want, do it. Do yeah, let's, comment now? yeah, I think so. Okay, I am also a neighbor. <clears throat> Um, I live on 142 South Center Street. I'm across the street from Melissa. I, our house borders the car dealership, so um, we are right behind it. We actually have a chunk of our property that hangs out, kind of. Um, so probably our property, I'm guessing, is um, at most at risk for a lot of the things that Melissa talked about but that I also have concerns about. Uh, so we have lived there for, um, it will be 18 years in July, um, and we've seen a lot of transitions with the car dealership. Some of the things that Melissa's talked about, it's actually, they've been improved upon. <laughs> um, for example, uh, she had mentioned the um, PA system. We moved there when they really learned a lot of cell phones and so pretty much I sat outside one day and it was pretty much every 45 seconds somebody was going off on the PA and that was pretty much every day um, and we too did not open our windows in the summertime because of that. Um, and it was kind of disturbing. It still happens, it's not as bad as it was. Um, so that is an issue uh, that I'm concerned about and wanna make sure that um, if car dealership does build, that they take all these considerations into effect. Um, another issue, which was a huge issue for us, our lights. We have a very tall two-story house um, and when we purchase the property, there's a property right next to ours that is an empty lot and the empty lot had beautiful tall trees um, and all those trees I came home from work one day and they were all chopped down and we were on the 50 yard line. So the lights are, um, the lights are at the street facing our house, most of them. Um, and back, um, we had lots of discussions with Harvey when he owned it. And he did um, build or plant uh, trees, <coughs> trees that are now nice and tall. And one concern is that those do not get cut down um, because they are now up to 20 feet tall and it would make a huge difference um, not only for the lights but the privacy so um, privacy is a big issue too um, i would like a fence behind the um, trees because every year snow is pushed onto the trees and this year especially <coughs> um, my husband and my son and myself went out and we when it was icy and we had to scrape down the ice off of the trees because we were afraid they were gonna die. Three trees have already died um, because of snow removal. So that is a concern. Um, snow removal is a big concern. I've seen the plans um, and there doesn't look to be any place for snow to go. Right now there's a vacant lot and that's where the snow hills go. So, um, um, promotions and gimmicks. When we first purchased our house, um, Harvey was a wonderful man. 
but he loved promotions and gimmicks. I would come home from work at night, um, driving Lincoln Lake, and 10 miles away I could see the floodlights. He had floodlights, he, at one time he had a huge gorilla, he had balloons, um, it was always a carnival all the time. I don't want that to come back. I'm thankful that that is gone and I want to make sure that never happens again. Um, uh, visibility from the front of the property. Um, Melissa had mentioned um, that there's cars on the street. That's a huge problem. Um, I have teenagers and they're learning to drive and my daughter just breaks down in tears sometimes when she has to try to get on to 21, especially if she's turning left. Um, when Rhonda Tire was there, it was especially bad, and I don't want it to go back to that. It's been wonderful since they've been gone. Um, and the other piece, as I saw the plans, and I see that they're gonna plant some trees, um, which looks very aesthetic, um, but I want to make sure that the construction company understands our street. It curves and goes like that, and we come out and we have a little bit of a curve. So even right now, if you go down the street, there's a blue truck that's parked, and you would not think that would hinder any visibility, but it is, the sidewalk is here, the truck is here, and the other day when there was a lot of traffic and it was dark, I, I left, right, left, right, left, right, and then scoop right out of there because of that truck. And so I want that to really be taken into consideration when um, they're building that because of the curvature and the way our street is, you really have to pull back from that street more than I think you would for any other business. Um, uh, again, the use of the paging system, um, I would prefer no paging system, um, that they just use phones, especially in this day and age. Um, I want to know when the beginning and end of construction is and how that's going to affect me, especially being right on that property line. Um, uh, I too had written down car alarms. Um, that is, <laughs> Melissa's right, that does, it just happened the other day, the dog goes barking, and um, it was especially hard when my kids were younger and trying to get them to sleep, even at eight o'clock at night, and somebody's trying to find the car alarms. It went on one night for at least an hour, um, or find the cars. Um, um, and I'm too, I am very concerned about my house value, uh, especially since it's going to back right up. And to be honest with you, my son he has three more years of school. I'm probably going to move because I don't want to be next to the car dealership that close when he's done with school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For the record, can I get your name, please? Kelly Taylor. Kelly Taylor, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess and we have another gentleman coming up here, I believe. I'm Kelly's husband, Mike. I'll make it quick. The one thing that I wanted to reiterate that Melissa said is that it is continuous with the meetings at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and people come in and they're talking and using profane language and they're squealing the tires and this and that. And I don't know what they're doing at 2, 3 in the morning, but that happens continuously over the summer all the time and the squealing of the tires also happens a lot during the regular business hours and I don't think people would be real appreciative of their cars being used in that way. I just worry that if the business is increased and it's enlarged that it's that much more business going that way and that there's going to be even more of that going on. So that's just an added concern that I would be worried about. Thanks Mike. Yep. Anybody else? Some of these questions I think will be answered tonight fairly uh, in, in, this, in the course of this presentation. Uh, and then some of them will be part of the discussion as we're going forward here. So 
Um, with that, let's let's start the presentation. Um, so we're going to start with the site plan review, where we just look at a lot of the dimensional requirements of the site, and we'll get into some of the more specific things about the about the use itself uh, after that. So uh, the building, as it's proposed, satisfied all the setback requirements. Um, the one part of the site plan, or the one requirement that's not satisfied, is that the zoning ordinance does specify a maximum 60% lot coverage, which includes parking areas. Um, right now, the site is uh, the site plan is 85% uh, covered, so it's it's a bit above the required 60. Uh, however. Currently, without the improvements, as it sits right now, it's at about 87 percent. So they're they're coming down as far as the the percentage of uh, the lot that's going to be covered by impervious services. In the past, as as long as there's as, as long as the, the proposed plan is more conforming than the existing plan, we've uh, we generally allowed that. So in, in that instance, um, I think they're okay. Lighting is uh, was addressed by the applicant uh, just just recently. Um, they, they in the application materials they state that all the site lighting is going to be fully cut off and will be directed away from residential areas. And they submitted a uh, photometric plan. Um, within the zoning ordinance, there's a standard that says that um, lighting must be confined to the subject property by screening, shielding, landscaping, or other measures such that no lighting in excess of one half a foot candle is cast onto adjoining private property. Um, looking at their, at their, when I wrote this report, looking at their preliminary uh, site lighting plan, they looked like they were going to be well in excess of that. Uh, they, but on, on the first plan, they said it didn't, it didn't show those values going out and extending across the property line. Uh, they did submit an updated photometric plan, which is, uh, Certainly, in, it appears to be in, in compliance because of the way that the lights are designed. The light is cast on, into the interior of the site. Uh, however, it's, 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 the site itself is going to be bright. I mean, there's, I mean, every newer car dealer that you go by in any community, you can, they're, at night, they're pretty darn bright. Um, I think that, I, mean, I, I think that's something that you guys should talk about. The, you know, the overall, right around the edges of the property it looks like it's it's, it's going to be okay they're not proposing to remove any of those trees um, that uh, you had mentioned there so I do think there's going to be some protection to those property owners especially to the ones that sell um, but again I bring this up is just as kind of an observation uh, Andy just just a quick question here and actually for Kelly are these the um, are the lights currently that are um, a nuisance for you, um, and I'm using that word, but the, uh, the ones in, in your concern, are those on the car dealership currently, or are they on street lighting, or? No, it's on the car dealership. So it is on the car dealership. the car dealership. Okay, thank you. So, Andy, what you're saying though is that the, the, do, the new plan brings them uh, pretty much in compliance as far as our yeah, standards. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't alleviate my my concern that the site itself is going to be really, really bright. Mm -hmm. I mean, just driving by down the street, when you look at it, you're going to say, "Wow, that's pretty bright." But when you're when you're if you're standing there measuring it, you know, with the how much light is cast from the site onto the street or onto the neighboring property, I think they're going to be okay. But it's still not going to you know change the fact that they're going to have something next door that's just going to be very visible. It's gonna as it is, it's, 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 it's going to be bright. They all are. I mean, uh, it's like, you know, 20, 30 foot candles in the middle of the site or more. So it's going to be, it's, 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 it's going to be bright. Um, that doesn't mean you can't approve it. It's just an observation, I think, for you guys to discuss. Um, there is, is also a provision in a zoning ordinance in the lighting section um, that allows the planning commissioner to depart from the standards of your lighting chapter. Um, if, they, if the applicant applies in writing, uh, which they have, um, and, and this is something that I, I requested, they asked if I had any comments on, on the site plan, and so I informed them that it, it appears that their lighting plan was, uh, was, was a bit strong, and so they submitted this, this written letter to us. And I'll just, 
um, read it for you so you are aware of what of what they're asking for. Um, so this says uh, we would like to request the planning commission grant a departure from the zoning ordinance for the plus site lighting levels proposed on the enclosed photometric plan for the proposed Beth Baker Chrysler Dodge Chief Ramp Facility 930 West Main. Um, as shown on the site plan, there are some areas on the north and west property lines where the light levels exceed 0.5 foot candles. Requested based on the following criteria as stipulated in 4.24F of the local zoning ordinance. So within this section, there are just four standards, and so they've printed each standard and then just written some comments underneath it as part of this application. Now, the first standard is the uses permitted or special land use in the zoning district. Uh, their comment is the open air business is permitted in the zoning district as a special land use, and it's expected to be approved by the Planning Commission at the April 9, 2018 meeting. Number two, the applicant will undertake reasonable measures to ensure that the public health, safety, and welfare would not be undermined by approving the proposed departure. They state the lighting levels are the lighting levels proposed are based on typical industry standards for automobile dealerships and will not have an adverse effect on the public health, safety, and welfare. The lighting levels will help provide a safe sales area for customers and be a major deterrent of vandalism. Number three, the proposed plan includes reasonable measures to mitigate any clear annoyance, intrusion, or distraction that would be caused by the proposed lighting. They state that the lighting proposed are lighting that our lighting will be installed to minimize glare and light spill to the adjacent roadways. The new lighting proposed will be all state-of-the-art LED fixtures designed as full cutoffs to minimize glare and light spill. Number four, the general public would benefit from the proposed lighting and the proposed lighting and, un and related land use are consistent with the city master plan. They state that the proposed light levels will give a sense of security to the customers and staff during daily operations and after hours when the dealership is closed. Since automobile shoppers frequently walk around to look at inventory when the dealership is closed, good lighting is necessary for their safety and to minimize after hour vandalism. Then please find attached to revised photometric plan cut sheets of the proposed fixtures. If you need additional information, please not hesitate to call. That's from my comment. So um, the uh, that's part of the request is is for planning commission approval of the lighting plan as it's submitted. Um, like I said, I think that there you know, the plan indicates that they're, you know, pretty much in compliance for the most part all around all around the perimeter of, of the site, but it doesn't eliminate my concern of how bright in general to the property is going to be. Right, keep going. Um, um, stop there. What do you want? Do, do, do you guys want to talk about that lighting right now, or do you want to keep on going for a bit? I have a couple of questions. Sure, go ahead. I guess first hours of operation. Um, I know that it was indicated that people come after hours to potentially look for vehicles. Is there anything that could be done as far as you know after a certain time the lights are, are dim? Um, and then my second question is cameras. Are there going to be cameras available um, so that for vandalism or, or whatnot the concerns that there's enough light that a camera could see into darker areas? Um, but still not be needing to be so bright as far as you know, the eyesore portion of it. So those are just my two kind of points or questions. Anybody else? I, I too wrote down, uh, let's see, uh, to have the, have the uh, lighting on a um, uh, sure, partial cutoff of lights at night um, or dimming. Uh, would be the probably the more preferred one. So if if you can keep that in your notes, I guess at this point. I mean, do you want uh, the applicant to answer any of? Michael, do you want? Did you, did, can you answer any of these questions? Is there a timing that they are on now? Right. No, generally no. there isn't. There be no in the other dealerships that uh, they own. The, the the lights are on all night, and um, like I said. Um, it's, it's a big deterrent for the, the vandalism and stealing tires and, and that type of thing that really happens in, in there's dark areas. Um, I think as far as the, your property, um, I think the new, the proposed plan of the new buildings is going to shield a lot of that lighting. Um, 
because the, the, the building is right there. It's going to shield a lot of that light from the front of the lot where you know, that's where most of the um, site lighting is. Well, I guess that's I partially abandoned my concern is, is in that corner where uh, Kelly's house is, Mike and Kelly's house is, um, if, if the lights in that portion of it could be turned down at night, because it's also right there on Center Street. I mean, that, that, that corner there is, uh, it's, as it stands right now, obviously there's not much there, frankly. I mean, there, are, there are trees there. But there's open area too, especially in the corner there. And by moving the building back, you're, you're correct. It should shield a lot of the lighting going forward up there. But behind your building, I guess the back side of the building there, um, I, I guess the question becomes whether or not the, the, yeah, the lighting can be. Lighting level there. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to me as though that that's the area of concern. There's not as many houses on Center Street. I mean, on um, uh, South Street? South Street. Yeah. So on, on the other side. Mm -hmm. But on that, on that Center Street right there, there are houses, and currently there's not much there. I mean, there are trees there. Yeah, those certainly. Trees are gonna stay. Yeah, exactly. But there's not a fence going. Currently, there's not a fence going. No, we don't. Around. Show fence right yeah. Now. So that's a good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Keep a fence up so they don't cross snow in there. The trees. Right, right. Yeah, that that that. I mean, you know, that's going to have to be addressed somewhere. The snow plowing. You know, where where are you going to put the snow? Yeah, the, the, the other concern. In the winter time, the 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 part of the parking lot will be used for you know the snow, which would mean less parking area for the vehicle. But that's where it's going to be. It's going to be on the paved area. On the paved area. Okay. Which keeps it away from that corner. Yes, because there's st there's still a uh, right. uh, strip of um, a grass, so landscaping right. exactly. along that line. Exactly. Okay. Um, anybody else before we get started? Let's let's we'll hone in on that area as we as we go along. Okay. Um, the next item on the site plan that we talk about in our report here, I'm on the middle of page two, is parking. Uh, they proposed 232 spaces. The zoning ordinance requires 175. Um, obviously, they're they're well in excess of that. Although, you know, this is mostly mostly inventory parking. It's not customer parking, so you're not talking about you know, that many cars coming and going constantly throughout the course of the day. Um, so that is uh, in compliance with the zoning ordinance. I don't know if there's any other. I just have a question on that. Obviously, there are um, lots, if you would, and when we actually look at the site plans, um, it would be helpful, I think, if you can point out, what, as a customer, when I drive in, where am I parking? Where is the um, repair center? Uh, because those are obviously high points of people coming and going. Um, and the inventory, I mean, it, 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 it's actually, um, it's not a, it's not a retail parking lot. It's not a public parking lot. It's, it's, it's a storage area more than anything at this point. So I mean, the question becomes is how to make a, a, a efficient use of that and yet at the same time to make it safe for everybody. So those, those are some of the concerns I would have. I mean, I'll, as long as the public can get in and out easily and have good parking and you know not being in peril. And I know you don't want them in peril, so it's, you know, it's mutual. Um, landscaping, this was one of the more kind of probably complex parts of the application because this is a, a site that has frontage on three streets. For the purposes of, of, of 